Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today we explore the basics on one of the most important dinosaurs in the history of paleontology. Many dinosaurs are celebrated for their significance. Tyrannosaurus rex for its dominance in pop culture, the Archaeopteryx for revealing the link between dinosaurs and modern birds. But this particular dinosaur stands apart. It was the first dinosaur ever discovered and played a key role in defining the very group that this channel is named after. It's the progenitor of the saurian name, Megalosaurus. While the name Megalosaurus and the term dinosaur would not come about until 1824, various remains of Megalosaurus are believed to have been recovered before this point, although the credibility of such discoveries are hazy. In 1676, English naturalist Robert Plot would publish a description and illustration of what is now believed to be the first instance of a non-avian dinosaur in scientific literature, which Plot identified as a fragment of a thigh bone or a femur. And I know what you're thinking, but seriously, grow up. This is an academic and prestigious channel. We would never stoop to such lowbrow comedy. Without knowledge of the dinosaur grouping, Plot would theorize these remains belonged to a Roman war elephant, which was reasonable, as the Romans had controlled much of southern England from 43 to 410 AD, or possibly a giant human, citing examples from the Bible, like Goliath. Regardless of which, this illustration and description would later be published in a book by Richard Brooks nearly 100 years later in 1763, where someone, possibly Brooks or another illustrator on the book, would caption the specimen with a genus and species name, technically making this the first genus and species name ever assigned to dinosaur remains, choosing to name it... I, uh... I, th I think I owe you guys an apology. Over the following 200 years or so, remains would continue to be recovered, but were either left ambiguous as to what they were, or were classified as remains of known animals like fish or squids. Eventually, a lower jaw specimen would be acquired by paleontologist William Buckland, who was unsure what this jaw could belong to. He would invite French anatomist Georges Cuvier to Oxford in 1818 in order to help identify what this could belong to, with Cuvier concluding they belonged to a giant lizard-like creature. Now, Cuvier was better qualified for identifying these fossils than others, as he is often credited as being the progenitor of the scientific concept for extinction. Before Cuvier, science largely believed in the idea that life was static and divinely created, with this idea having its earliest roots in the writings of Aristotle, and later reinforced in the book of Genesis. It was believed that species were created from a higher being and were to be perfect, meaning they could not be completely removed from the earth, or put in modern terms, go extinct. Fossils of animals no longer native to the region, such as the elephant origins of... Scrotum humanum, was often explained away by not being an animal that was completely wiped off the earth, but simply an instance of God's creation that was relocated or was destroyed by an act of God and perfected elsewhere on the planet, proved by elephants still existing in regions like Africa or India. Back to Megalosaurus. Buckland, his later wife and fellow paleontologist Mary Moreland, as well as paleontologist William Conybeare, would continue to study the specimen, and in 1822, planned to publish their findings. While around the same time, Cuvier, who helped Buckland come to this reptilian conclusion, was preparing to present his own work on the description of a new aquatic reptile, the Mosasaurus. Buckland would select the name Megalosaurus, and while this publication would not come to fruition, the name and illustrations of the creature would be released, and eventually, in 1824, alongside Connie Bear's own work to describe another marine reptile, the Plesiosaurus, Megalosaurus was formally announced, becoming the first non-avian dinosaur to ever be published. 
Buckland would not provide a species name upon its announcement, but a few years later, paleontologist Gideon Mantell would provide the species the name Bucklandi, which still persists today. But this singular species would not remain alone for long. But let's talk about this derby guy first. The first reconstructions of Megalosaurus were provided by Buckland himself, where he considered the creature to be an amphibious quadruped, capable of swimming in lakes and rivers, and still being able to walk around on land. While obviously pretty funny to see now, one feature he was actually quite forward-thinking on was the positioning of the legs, which were presented as further underneath the body, rather than being more sprawled out like modern lizards. This positioning is actually quite close to how we now understand many quadrupedal ornithischians to be orientated today. Based off of Buckland's work, paleontologist Richard Owen would create a new grouping of animals called the Dinosauria in 1842 to include Megalosaurus, the herbivorous protohadrosaur Iguanodon, discovered in 1822, and the often less discussed yet no less important notosaurid, Hyliosaurus, discovered in 1832. Owens would also advise on the construction of concrete sculptures to be made and placed in the Crystal Palace Gardens, one of the earliest examples of dinosaurs acquiring mainstream appeal. This quadrupedal stance would define how carnivorous dinosaurs appeared for the next 50 years, until the discovery of other large theropods like Eusheptospondylus and Allosaurus throughout the 1870s definitively proved an upright stance. Over the following 100 years or so, various remains would be assigned to the genus of dinosaur, but paleontologists may have become too generous in terms of what qualifies for a Megalosaurus. You see, throughout the 19th and going into the 20th century, Megalosaurus was seen as the typical carnivorous dinosaur. For this reason, the grouping quickly became what is called a wastebasket taxon, where remains with no sufficiently distinct features would be classified under the Megalosaurus name as a sort of catch-all distinction. By some accounts, Megalosaurus may have reached as many as 20 distinct species, and included under these species would be dinosaurs, like Metriancanthosaurus, Eustreptospondylus, Torvosaurus, Carcardontosaurus, Majungasaurus, Erectopus, Proceratosaurus, Streptospondylus, Pochylopleuron, Magnosaurus, Sarcosaurus, Duryavenator, Crustatosaurus, Afrovenator, Chilantisaurus, Sinosaurus, Yangjuanosaurus, Allosaurus, Dryptosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Iliosuchus, and Pivetiosaurus. Try to guess how many of those I made up. The answer is none of them, because I tried to think of a name stupider than Erectopus and just admitted defeat. Moving into the late 20th century and early 21st century, paleontologists sought to better define the grouping and cut down on the use of these wastebasket taxons. First with restricting fossils to the Middle Jurassic of England, and later highlighting skeletal features unique to Megalosaurus mainly in the construction of the lower jaw and other postcranial bones. Today, only a single species of the genus remains, that being the Megalosaurus bucklandi. As for the genus name Megalosaurus, this name stems from Greek, including the words mega, meaning big, tall, or great, as well as soros, meaning lizard, having the name directly translate to big lizard. This name was more effective before we knew of the larger Dinosauria grouping, as Megalosaurus was certainly larger than any lizards known for the time, but today Megalosaurus has been eclipsed by many other large dinosaurs, and considered a fairly middling carnivore in terms of size. Buckland-eye, meanwhile, is a direct reference to William Buckland, the paleontologist responsible for naming this historic creature. Upon its declaration, Megalosaurus was considered one of the three members of the Dinosauria grouping, which for the time were believed to be closely related to modern lizards. But today, we obviously know this was false, and there are a few more than three Dinosaurians. At least two more. Maybe three, if, if you count that one. Today, Megalosaurus is the namesake for a family of carnivorous theropods called the Megalosauridae. 
Megalosaurids are believed to be some of the first large theropods to have appeared on the Earth. And while some have questioned their validity as a family due to unclear descriptions over the years, not too dissimilar to Megalosaurus itself, many paleontologists still recognize the group today. Their defining traits are found in subtle skeletal details, particularly in the structure of their forelimbs and hindlimbs. Based on some of these characteristics, some researchers even suggest they were close relatives of Spinosaurids, such as Baryonyx and Spinosaurus. Beyond Megalosaurus itself, other notable members include the island-dwelling Eustreptospondylus, an early discovery from the British Isles, estimated to reach about 15 feet or 4.5 meters in length, as well as Torvosaurus, likely the closest relative to Megalosaurus. Torvosaurus was a massive predator, nearly twice the size of Eustreptospondylus, at around 30 feet or 10 meters in length. And by some estimates, it was the largest terrestrial carnivore of late Jurassic Europe, potentially rivaling and even threatening the famed Jurassic hunter, Allosaurus. Despite being considered the quote-unquote typical theropod, we actually do not know too much about the general build of Megalosaurus due to a lack of complete skeletons found for the creature. As illustrated in this diagram, while some of the arms and legs are known, a majority of the body, tail, neck, and skull behind the snout have not been recovered. However, remains we do have, as well as gaps filled in by fellow megalosaurids and other medium-sized theropods, do give paleontologists a good idea of what this creature was actually like. Estimates believe megalosaurus could reach about 24 feet, or around 8 meters in length, and possibly reach a weight of around 1 ton. The skull of Megalosaurus was believed to be fairly stubby in appearance, with a fairly robust lower jaw lined with over a dozen large, backward-curving teeth. This construction of jaw and teeth likely provided this creature with excellent grip, with the teeth hooking into their victims and helping Megalosaurus better restrain its target and reduce any unnecessary struggle. Its overall body structure is considered fairly normal for many other medium to large theropods, with a robust body, muscular legs, comparatively much smaller forelimbs, and a long horizontal tail to counterbalance their upper body. Development of the bone, called ossification, indicates this creature was exceptionally muscular and robust, with the forelimbs being a unique highlight. This is common for many basal carnivores from the Jurassic, where more robust and longer forelimbs hinted that they may have played a more active role in hunting their prey. Whereas later theropods, like Cargardontosaurids and Tyrannosaurids, while still being fairly muscular, would not be as robust and were significantly shorter relative to their bodies, indicating these larger theropods relied more on their jaws and overwhelming size to take down their prey. Megalosaurus is believed to have lived during the Middle Jurassic, around 168 to 166 million years ago. Based on fossils still belonging to the genus, it was believed to have lived in the southern regions of England, namely Oxfordshire and Gloucestershire. During this time, Europe would have been made up of an archipelago of islands divided by shallow seaways. The islands would be fairly tropical, home to lush vegetation and a variety of dinosaurs. Based on the limited distribution of Megalosaurus remains, and a similar lack of dinosaurs like Cetiosaurus far outside this range, it is believed Megalosaurus would be restricted to a specific area of land masses called the London Brabant Massif, essentially an area of increased elevation due to tectonic plate positioning. The largest of these islands, sometimes referred to as simply the London Brabant Island, was believed to be one of the largest in the archipelago, and estimates believe it could have been comparable in size to modern-day Cuba. Other dinosaurs from this time and region would include the previously mentioned Cetiosaurus. Once thought to be an extremely large crocodile, it is now understood to be a medium-sized sauropod, reaching lengths of around 52 feet, or about 16 meters, and weighing up to about 11 tons, or around 12 short tons. 
Aside from Cetiosaurus, while a number of teeth and fragmentary bones from herbivores are known, not many species have been identified. Among them were a mix of small heterodontosaurs, spike-backed stegosaurs, and heavily armored ankylosaurs, among others. Carnivores are in a similar boat. While some, like the Cruxy Kairos, have at least been named, few fossils have been assigned to the creature, so descriptions regarding how it lived and how large it truly was are difficult. One carnivore we do know of includes the previous Dinobasic entry, Proceratosaurus. A smaller carnivore at only around 10 feet or about 3 meters in length, and only weighing in at about 220 pounds, or about 100 kilograms. And despite its size and misleading name, this unique crested theropod may be one of the earliest known members of the Tyrannosauridia, which would of course give rise to the mighty Tyrannosaurs, nearly 100 million years later. However, back in Middle Jurassic England, Megalosaurus was believed to be the apex predator of its environment. Little is known about how this creature would live and hunt, but it is theorized Megalosaurus would take on some of the largest herbivores of their ecosystem, namely the numerous unidentified stegosaurs and sauropods like Cetiosaurus. Their muscular bodies certainly would give them the strength to challenge such creatures, and their dagger-like teeth could easily slice into the tough flesh of their victims, allowing them to tear chunks out of their prey, or simply drag them to the ground and deliver a killing blow. The Megalosaurus is somewhat interesting when it comes to media appearances, as the dinosaur has two distinct depictions represented in media. Its original lizard-like design, illustrated by Buckland back in the 1800s, has obviously made fewer appearances in modern media for, you know, being dead wrong. But upon its release to the public, dinosaurs became somewhat of a phenomenon, making many appearances in paintings and illustrations from time to time, and probably their most significant appearance in the Crystal Palace statues. As for their more theropod-derived appearances, this has unfortunately been more sparse. While historically significant, the Megalosaurus's time as a wastebasket taxon likely strained its reputation as a scientifically accurate and actually unique dinosaur. Furthermore, its typical build and lack of significant distinguishing features results in Megalosaurus having to compete with many of the dinosaurs that once fell under its name. And when some of these dinosaurs include Allosaurus, Majungasaurus, and Carcardontosaurus, you certainly have some tight competition. But the Megalosaurus has still received some attention. These include the 2015 documentary, Dinosaur Britain, 2008's animated show, Dinosaur King, and appearing in various games across the Jurassic World franchise, most prominently as part of the Deluxe Edition of the 2021 Jurassic World Evolution 2, among plenty of other smaller roles. As we've discussed in several Dino Basics episodes, scientific significance doesn't always translate to pop culture fame. Nowhere is this clearer than with Megalosaurus. As the first dinosaur ever formally named, it holds a pivotal place in the history of the Dinosauria grouping. Yet its legacy has been overshadowed by its reputation as an overly broad genus, its relatively plain appearance compared to other theropods, and the almost comically inaccurate reconstructions of the past. Despite these setbacks, Megalosaurus remains a defining figure in the long and fascinating history of dinosaurs. I think it's safe to say, whether its appearance involves a medium-sized archetype or that, the Megalosaurus was truly a mega-nificent creature from the earliest days of paleontology. That's good to do this episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Megalosaurus and if you've heard this dinosaur before the video. We've got Megalosaurus down, and before that, Iguanodon. The last of the early trifecta is Hyliosaurus. Although I don't think I've seen a single request for it, and I already have some ideas on my own. So we may have to wait on that one. It certainly won't be next week's entry, as we explore the basics on one of the most unusual necks among the sauropods. And that is really saying something. The Bahadasaurus. Thank you for your support. 
and see you in the next video.